Hello, today Akil and I will be showing you the physics behind the mousetrap car and determine the proper method to create a car that can travel the furthest and the fastest. How does a mousetrap car work? A mousetrap car can travel over a distance independently without the user moving it on their own. The entire car is powered by a mousetrap. When the spring in the mousetrap car is pulled all the way back, it contains elastic potential energy. Once the mousetrap car is released, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy and waste heat from the friction as the spring returns to its normal position. Friction plays an important part in the functions of a mousetrap car. The friction between the spring and the axle allows for the wheel to rotate. The friction between the wheels and the floor is important to consider since too much friction will negatively affect the speed and the distance the car travels, while not enough friction will cause the wheels to slide. The friction between the axles and the frame of the mousetrap car slow it down and eventually cause it to stop. Torque is a measure of force that causes rotation. In the mousetrap car, the rod attached to the spring produces the torque. The rope that is wrapped around the axle allows for the torque to be produced on the rear axle. The most torque is applied when the rod is directly over the rear axle. The mechanical advantage is another important physics principle in the function of a mousetrap car. Mechanical advantage is a ratio of the force inputted and outputted in a machine to measure the amplification the machine achieves. When dealing with the mousetrap car, the smaller mechanical advantage the better the car will be at traveling for a long distance. Smaller mechanical advantage allows for more of the energy from the spring to be transferred as kinetic energy, since it is transferred slower and does not cause the wheels to spin out. The second formula does not account for friction like the first formula does. As the equations above show, the first car can travel 336 times further than the lever of the mousetrap travels, and the second car can travel 168 times further than the mousetrap travels. Most of the energy that was converted into kinetic energy goes to moving the wheels of the mousetrap car. The larger the wheels of the mousetrap car, the more energy that goes into initially moving them, since there is more rotational inertia. Even though that seems that having smaller wheels would be ideal for the mousetrap car, since they have smaller rotational inertia, larger rotational inertia will also keep the wheel spinning for a longer period of time. So it may take multiple trials to find the ideal size wheels for a mousetrap car. The force from the spring varies depending on how far back the lever of the mousetrap is pulled. The graph shown demonstrates the force versus distance as you move the lever back. Since the mousetrap is preloaded, the force does not start at zero when the distance is zero. From, this, from the graph, we are able to determine that the potential energy of the system is 47 joules. From there, we use the formula to find the theoretical maximum velocity. Since the four wheels of the system make up a significant portion of the mass of the mousetrap car, the rotational energy of the four wheels must be accounted for. The distance versus time graph was created by fully winding up the mousetrap and letting it go through both its thrust phase, which is when the string is unraveling and the car is accelerating, and through its coast phase, where the string runs out and the car maintains a constant velocity. So let's talk about the results. We calculate the velocity when the lever comes down and the car is coasting. When we calculated mathematically, we got a velocity of 2.4 meters per second. When we experimented it, however, we got 0.9 meters per second as our result, a 62.5% error. So what was the issue? The issue came from an immense amount of internal and external friction acting upon the mousetrap car, causing it to slow down immensely. Another factor that could have led to such a high percent error was the lack of friction involved in the process of calculating the theoretical velocity. The surface used in the experiment was obviously going to have some friction, which would have made the experimental velocity incomparable to the theoretical one. As can be seen by the presentation, there are many physics principles that coincide to make the mousetrap car work and influence the design of it. The two main parts that influence the function of the mousetrap car are the size of the wheels, which affect the energy consumed and the distance traveled, and the length of the lever, which affects the speed and distance of the car. Since there is not a set way to construct a mousetrap car, you have a variety of styles to use and none of them are incorrect. Try out your own ideas and see what you can make. 